Hello there, my name is Lanius and as you can tell we're going to do some serious business today. Mm. Recently yeah. I found out about a, uh, hmm, a program called uh, Olama. Yes, I explained it very well, but anyway, it's kind of a tool like Docker, but for running uh, large language models. So, same thing as ChatGPT, let's say. And when I was playing with it for a bit, I've got it uh, working in Emacs, by the way, which I will show you in a moment. So, um, what do we start with? So maybe let's start with how to install it actually. So don't worry about it, that it's, that it's Windows. It's not for Windows, but let's go to Linux and of course, there's a bash script for installation but if you are using Arch Linux it is in uh, in the repository or in AUR actually not sure right now but not you can install it just like that and if you are on Windows you can actually install it uh, In, in in WSL which I have here of course I won't be installing it because I already have it so maybe let's go to github and yeah, here it is this is the instruction you can also just uh, use a docker image which you could run on Windows as well, of course. <coughs> and uh, here you have nicely listed uh, models. I believe they have more of, of this, but I will, will go to that in a moment. So, to actually use Olama, you need it running first, so you run Olama serve. I will run it in screen so I can put it in the background. We have some information here, like the um, endpoints you can use, which will be important in a moment because I've made some some little thing with with that which I will of course show you but now let's just do Olama run and let's run Llama 2 which is I guess kind of default model and by the way uh, here is like the way of pulling the, uh, the models but if you just run the model and it is in library but you don't have it locally it will be just pulled and then and then run here so let's try it hello mm -hmm. as you can see it works quite fine mm, but let's maybe ask it to I don't know write some code so mm, Something actually interesting. I'm sure I'm a little surprised how fast it is because 
the model I use is way slower, especially if you give give it some, you know, more uh, complex tasks, like writing some code, yeah. And actually, it's nice. The same thing is with with other model I'm using that it really explains the code. ChatGPT does it as well. And to be totally honest, uh, ChatGPT does a little better job with suggesting code. But I guess it depends on what are you using. I didn't have really like a good experience with getting some Magento code for 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 what I was doing, what I want to test. Yeah. So as you can see, it it's uh, it looks pretty promising. Hmm. We have here. Okay. So let me minimize this for a moment and let me open Emacs. So I can show you. Uh, so there's this uh, a little problem that WSL Windows not really work with the Windows snapping and and the other stuff. But that's that's another subject, let's say. So I have the um, plugin installed. Mm, actually, there's no configuration at all. Mm -mm -mm. Other than, other than some key bindings I've made here, because I just, mm, yeah, I just installed the package here, and that's that. I also tried Chat GPT thing, but it didn't really work, and I didn't really. Mm, care too much to, to try to make it work so I have this prompt here uh, I use the Zephyr model which seems best with suggesting code so mm, let's ask something like mm, how do I place a value in my SQL table. And it opens a buffer here. See, it's thinking right now. And it's spitting out some response here. And then, as you can see, it even suggests they're just using PHP my admin. <laughs> and it gives you a nice line of code which at least for me I always forget uh, the um, order of, of, of this stuff and you know you don't want to mess it I mean of course it's only done in some you know the de development that databases or or whatever but still would be a pain if you miss the order and like put the same value everywhere or something which could happen so what do we have here okay mm. let's uh, bring this back up Mm. So yeah, here is uh, also with with Olama you can use not only the models that are there, mm. which is quite a few of them. I haven't tr tried all of them, but some I have tried. Mm. I had really big hopes for Star Coder, but it seemed to don't really work at all. I mean, it was spitting some random 
random stuff and also the the mistral model is pretty fast but i'm not sure about how it how well it does with code but as you can see there is something mm, there are some versions of of mistral which might be mm, interesting to, to check as you can see some of the models are like more specialized with something like uh, mm, 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 I've just seen it like here like Samantha Mistral trained in philosophy psychology so that's pretty interesting and look up these models here but you can as well mm, download models uh, from elsewhere with the mm, and with the correct you know uh, format I mean from the hugging face and I don't know if, if there is another like uh, uh, big you know repository of this <coughs> anyway what we want to do now so you want to create our own our own model because you can customize a model using model file which resembles a docker file so more similarities to uh, to docker so let's copy that and let's just use vim mm. But, mm, so, the more creative, I guess it's that it is more likely to hallucinate something. But, I guess for tests it's fine. And we don't want Mario. Mm. Netflix. Oh, okay. I don't know why I spelled it like this. <laughs> so, if everything goes well, mm, we would have a virtual primogen. <laughs> and it should go just eight. So, let's run it. Right, hello world in Rust. Okay, I haven't I haven't told them the model to be, you know, very so enthusiastic about the Rust, but I guess I don't know. Maybe maybe it knows who, who the primogen is. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so but enough with 
with no with 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 the funny stuff. Uh, another thing on my list, as I have one, is to show you what I actually have created. Let me remove this model file because I just created it in my home. So let's see the projects. Olama chat. And here I have a, mm, a little, I mean, not really little. I mean, it is little, but surprisingly, the node modules are like 400 modules there. <laughs> anyway, I've decided to just for for like experiment create a chat gpt like chatbot uh, in in typescript and react so let's start it and yeah let's open it here it's local What? Ah, shit. Okay, why? Why aren't you running? Is it not like this? Okay. So, let's refresh it. So, as you can see, it kind of resembles ChatGPT and it uses a Mistral model in the backend. And let's just do something test. So it it responds. It also remembers the uh, the conversation. So maybe let's ask something. Mm. Something stupid. I'm not really sure how Mistral is, you know, uh, good with code, but I guess every of these models like have some, some, some of, some of, some of this data. And I'm starting to think that Lama 2 is actually faster. So we have that and okay I've messed up the styling here but let's not worry about it now uh, as you can see I've also made it so the uh, markdown is is actually rendered as HTML so it's more readable and I could also take care of the styling here, but apparently I missed something. Of course, it couldn't just work if I'm showing this, yeah? Anyway, so now... Mm,
So one kind of issue is that, you know, there is no loader. I could add some loader, but I just disable the input and the, 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 the button here. Actually, with Olama, you could make it so that it works just like a chat GPT because by default it's, it streams the answer. So you get one token after another. So you could just take the tokens and add them, you know, like in chat GPT. So word by word by word by word. But I just figured it's better to just, I mean, for sure, it's just easier to do it this way. And it doesn't really change that much. TypeScript so as you can see it remembers the conversation so I asked for this weird thing to use node.js to move a file and then I've, I've precise that I want it to use TypeScript so it re, it re, rewritten the snippet with TypeScript and for some reason it at, at one moment it loses the fucking background here Jesus Christ. Uh. Anyway, okay, let's go. Let's go to the code. Mm, so I closed it. I did. Mm -hmm. Do we find anything in WSL? Emacs is like better at managing its own you know window size window status etc than the actual <laughs> windows anyway so let's go to the olama project uh, first let's go to server because it's like very very simple actually I might not even need that at all, but I figured it's better to have something between the, you know, the API itself and the client. So I've created this. Well, to be completely honest, uh, this code is like 90% created by ChatGPT, which is funny. Uh, I, of course, I had to uh, actually make uh, the correct call because ChatGPT doesn't really know how Olama works. I guess it's quite a new thing. And also here, uh, of course, you specify the model, you specify the prompt. And stream false means that you get the full answer from the from the from the model, not the stream word by word by word by word, like right. Mm, and the context it is uh, it is to make the model remember the conversation because you get the context from the model and then you send the context back so that it remembers what what, what the conversation is of course <laughs> one thing that i could and i probably would fix there other than styling which wow the other thing that i could change here is add some configuration file like i don't know dot dot env i don't know i really don't know node and typescript like pretty much at all but i just wanted to use something i don't know and yeah so this is very simple i already discussed what is here Uh, and I lost my train of thought. Okay, so I, I I said that I would probably add some configuration files so you could configure actually the um, uh, the URL that that you want to to call here on the on on this backend. 
what model do you want to use and that's pretty much it actually mm, and also maybe the port uh, for the server to run so let's move on There's another thing here is well okay it's the just the HTML um, with the entry point for react here I'm of course not sure if I even done it correctly but here we go index tsx which just gets the the app and renders it in the in the uh, in the container I have some CSS here it's actually only for the uh, for the elements that are parsed uh, by the react markdown from the from the server because I cannot put uh, tailwind uh, classes on it so it does needed to be styled like this and of course the main file where every everything happens is here and yeah whole of this project was generated kind of I mean mainly generated by chat GPT but I've been through this code so many times I know how everything works here so it, it is not like oh I just generated it and it worked it didn't I had to you know go through uh, through this code and make it work but it was kind of like you know mm, a little mm, challenge to make chat GPT write an Olama chat so it it did quite quite well but there were some problems I had to google a little bit to see what is happening where etc and it came out quite okay so let's let's explain what is going on here so, um, Axios, well, it's used to just do the, do the request. As you can tell, I'm really proficient with TypeScript and JavaScript and Node. But, okay. Um, so, 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 the most... I mean, maybe not really the most important, but you know, the most one of the most important things here, it's it's this, the handle sent message, which here disables the 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 in the input before the uh, the response is sent. Also here, I set responses like this. I add the input there so the message appears actually on the screen uh, after and yeah I send the message I send the context that is then sent by the server to the Olama API here then I receive the context because I need to save it which maybe is not most elegant way but I have this uh, variable here outside like it's 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 global I guess it's bad but that's that it works <clears throat> of course probably most of this app is written like not really good because I don't know react I don't really know TypeScript and node I know JavaScript but it's more like you know tricky client side Alpine JS Sadly, some knockout JS. <clears throat> so yeah. So after that, I set the responses again with the input and the new message that was returned. I clear the input. If there's an error, the the it is logged. And after that, the input is enabled again. And after some little timeout, because it didn't work 
if it was immediate there, I focus the uh, input again, so you can just type. Of course, one other issue I've spotted right now is the fact that after you send the message, it don't, it doesn't scroll you to it. And of course, the problem with the background. So I guess it, it could it should be easy fix, but yeah. Also, the additional method here is the handle key press, so that you can just type enter, and it sends your message to the uh, to the to the to the bot actually, and you don't need to uh, click the send button. And here we go. So this is actually the whole uh, front end here. It uses Tailwind. And yeah, it goes through the through the responses, renders it, and uh, and it's all. It's probably also not the best way of making the uh, the users messages on yeah, of other background because doing it like the right way so i should have the template string in the class name here it for some reason didn't work maybe it's because uh, tailwind wasn't picking it up for some reason like the classes uh, wasn't uh, compiled into the into the final css but that's that, I just done it this way, so it works, but of course it could be still made better. So here I have the React Markdown, so that the response, which is Markdown, in Markdown is uh, basically rendered as HTML, so all the code blocks. Of course, they also could look better but it's kind of proof of concept right and here is the uh, the input itself it's actually text area and all the style changes here which also should have been classes here with the template string but the same story it didn't work other other way so i did it like this I might fix it soon, but it is the state of this little experiment right now. So I'm not sure if I have something else to tell now. Oh yeah. So we, my plan was to present how it works after going through the code, but I I did it anyway. So. Okay, uh, another kind of issue, let's say, but I don't think it's an issue. When you refresh the page, it just forgets everything. It doesn't, you know, store any mm, like data in the uh, like the session or something. It also might be changed, but I don't think it's that big of an issue. Of course, perfectly, it should work just like ChatGPT, so you would have some username unless we want, I would want to keep it just, you know, local uh, application, basically. But, uh, and it actually makes sense because, uh, you know, running an AI model isn't the lightest thing you could run. I mean, there are some cheap VPS servers, VPSs, but they are cheap and they're good for some, you know, st static sites, some maybe WordPress site or something like that. But but when I tried to just run uh, a model there, just from the command line. It was like giving me one token per, uh, I don't know, 20 seconds. 
maybe 10 seconds okay but it was very very slow so you would need some beefier server to actually run it on the server and of course i'm probably also thinking in the mm, not really like typescript way let's say <clears throat> because my initial like you know uh, idea what to do let me let me just do all the cool developer things so we will draw something in Excalibur now <laughs> so yeah my initial like mm, 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 thought idea is to have a server course some VPS server and on the server here's the Olama running as a service or or whatever you want to run it however you want to run it so that's that and on the same server mm, and we have our uh, application front-end and back-end mm -mm -mm. So yeah, we have the backend server uh, frontend client and okay so this i could actually move it shite i move it outside of this resize it because it should be um, like separate and it's the box here so it talks to the backend server uh, need response here the same happens here but still we just have you know this on the ports So what we need to do, at least what my, you know, PHP developer brain thinks that's the best way to do, is to also have an, of course, nginx server. How can I? Oh, 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 yes, that's that. Wonderful, isn't it? Beautiful. So, NGNX and this. NGNX would have like a let's say a domain that it would be pointing to let's say what mm, olama chat com whatever 
and this address would point our front end like this and of course we if we would be on this address there so sending some uh, requests to localhost wouldn't work okay uh, sending it to ip also wouldn't work so what we can do here so we could have actually just a directory mm, mapped by nginx like kind of directory because it's not really a directory like let's say it's just like this so this domain from nginx is mapped to the port that client is is running And now we have this uh, path that we would map the backend server. And actually now this is kind of wrong because now we talk this way. Because this, do this domain, the frontend client would talk to the uh, to the proxy here which then talks to the backend server so this way we have like quote unquote production ready environment but also this VPS server would need to be <laughs> really beefy so that the Olama model can run here so I don't really know why I was doing this stupid diagram but it was just for the meme okay so i will uh, post this this up on github but maybe i will do some fixes first to the styling and uh, maybe add this the configuration file and also fix the production mode which didn't work as you have seen so Anyway, I'm going to make maybe more some this kind of, you know, coding videos. So I hope you liked it. If you liked it, maybe leave a like, comment, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter and see you in the next one. Bye bye.